Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. We gonna go out to California, Tijuana today, when my father first started. And we gonna call this one, the Field Marshal is what they was calling me at this time because he was Field Marshaling from Detroit to California. And that take five days to get there and five days to get back because ain't no speeding there with your money and ain't no speeding back and you dirty. So it's a 10 day trip. Let me take you into when the field marshal know he had made it. Now to start off, John Classen was bullshitting, holding the dope out on the fat man and had it. So the fat man had devil he say he knew some Mexicans, this, that, that, they come to Tijuana. As I told you, the fat man and the penguin was the type of soldiers when you say it's there, come on. They done grab their hat and it's smoking on the way there to get it. So the field marshal in his sign was a fox and a wolf. Sly and sneaky. So you know that's what he had on the back of that 500 SEC when the feds took it. He had the field marshal with a fox and a wolf on the back letting them know this is the field marshal. The field marshal will smuggle the package in right under your nose until he opened his big mouth on that goddamn telephone, the party will be rolling. So understand, the field marshal is what they called him. And the field marshal is what his name was when he was out there marching from Detroit to California and back. Now the field marshal is out there clowning. I told you it's a five day there and five day back. Now, the field marshal found out he had made it when he went out there to California hooked up with. And here's the funny thing about this story too. The very motherfuckers he started with, they weren't from California, they was from Mexico. They were just coming to Tijuana to get his money. So they were actually Mexicans from Mexico. So like I told you, that last trip when he then went back, that last trip happened to be with the same people he started the first trip with. Now when you by yourself and you hustling and you got potential, sometimes niggas don't want to go with you. And when you're the founder, you have to do it all yourself sometimes. You have to be the field marshal. Go all the way to Mexico, Tijuana, get it. Come all the way back to Detroit and sell it yourself. This is what really made him mega rich before you all knew about him. He was the only nigga go get it, come back, and put it all in his joints. All over there on Hancock. That's what he do. This is the type of guy the field marshal was. You understand? So he go get 90% pure, break it down like the Black Dispatch told you all and make all the money. But after he got so hot and the feds was on him, remember this, Coleman Young lived directly across the street from Hancock. He's a senator at this time. He knew the fat man for many years. When he was a senator, he knew the fat man from way back. Like I told y'all, Fago, we go way back. Coleman Young knew my father before he was even mayor. He watched that man clock millions with Jamie Harris open the door for it. So understand this about the field marshal. The field marshal had been around so long, field marshal and so long, and like I told you, his specialty was getting that package in here under the feds nose. Then, when he met the penguin, a mapper, he was over with, man. Them motherfuckers talk about buying a farm in Afghanistan, bringing a pipeline all the way from Afghanistan is what the field marshal wanted to do. You understand? So when you guys have very little potential and very little thought, the fat man is all the way on the moon with his. Because he all the way over in Afghanistan. Why can't we as black men buy land in Afghanistan? And if we didn't buy it, we just wanted the farmer to farm Opie and Poppy and give it to us. And it'd be plenty of money in it for him. So it was still Detroit, 
Afghan pipeline. Understand that true reality, that would have came reality if the game had a went a little farther. But the feds were so hot on the fat man because he constantly fucked the streets up, they say. When the fat man hit, when he want to flood that motherfucker, he'll turn the faucet on and flood this motherfucker when he feel like turning that faucet off. He'll let you motherfuckers snort that garbage. See, this is the thing about it. When we used to sell, I couldn't just sell anything. Motherfuckers would come back and want their money back from me. Eddie, that blow what shit, man. Could I get my money back? That ain't that ain't what you use. That ain't the kind of quality you have. Take that shit back. It's total garbage. This is how they used to be on me. I couldn't sell garbage. I always had to have over the top. Because motherfuckers wouldn't buy garbage from me. They refused to. No matter how many times I tried, a few. They refused it. One time a motherfucker sold me a bunch, about $30,000 $30, worth of goddamn garbage, man. Lucky I had a big clientele. You know, so when I ran that first day, I ran five, six thousand, and everybody came back complaining, man, that shit ain't shit, that shit ain't shit. Man, you better get something else. You finna run everybody off. So I had to go out and catch up to a motherfucker in the streets I knew. At that time, Tracy was my man always. Tracy knew who had one, or I could find one that I could put this garbage with and get rid of. I'd take an ounce of what Tracy was gonna get me from Bone Man at that time, because these motherfuckers had got me. So. I would go get a half, Tracy go get an ounce from Bone Man, Bone Man, and I would mix it with an ounce of this garbage, and it bought it up. Boom! I could get rid of all this shit. So every time I buy an ounce, I was using this shit. I spent thirty-five dollars per cut, man. That's how niggas would beat you out in the street, man. I had to use thirty-five dollars worth of shit for nothing but cut. I had to go buy ounces from Bone Man and use this shit to cut it. That's all it was, was a fucking cut. So be careful out there. That's why it's important to have your own connect. Go get it. Prevents all the motherfucking nigga games. That's what they call that nigga shit. That's that nigga shit right there. So I just like to tell you all about the field marshal. Let me finish that. He had field marshal out to California. Got the package and came back. He's the only one. Now he's doing... Going to California, cop and coming back selling. When he get back with the package, you all, he already tired. Now you know that kind of trip, but the goddamn phone was ringing so much he couldn't go to sleep. Every time he thought he wanted to go to sleep, a motherfucker be calling. This man went and got the package, and I'm gonna tell you this: he used to take dabs just like he used to feed Black Butch dabs to do that shit. He fed himself dibs first. That's why he knew the shit worked when he had Bush taking dibs. Because he had already been taking dibs himself. He said, man, he popped them motherfucking dibs. He might not go to sleep for a week. By the time he got back, he sold that whole fucking package before he ever went to sleep. And at that point, he tried to figure out how to get back to motherfucking California and he's exhausted. So when you become so big, You'll know when you come bigger than yourself. You go and get a package all the way to come back to California, and you sell it in a day no more than two. Now you got to figure out how to go back to California. This is what Ford forced him to get Peter Gunn and start putting crews together. Because the field marshal had marshal. That fox and that wolf, that cleverness, that sneakiness, that's the field marshal. Let me say this to you all. I always like to buy black when I'm out there doing something. And that's just how I am. And that's how my father was. And that's how I was taught. So I always, like I told you, I drank Puff Daddy, Chirac, Peach. That's the one we love. I love Rick Ross, Rose. And we got another one out there called J5. A young brother out there trying to come up. It's like that white lightning, they tell me. That J5. It's like that white lightning, they tell me. I haven't had any yet. I don't know, but I just hear 
It's like that white lightning. It's a vodka. And let me tell you one quick story before I go. One quick one about the white lightning. Not his, just white lightning. I'm in Cincinnati seeing the cool jazz fest. Gladys Knight is coming on the stage. I'm sitting around a family reunion of all brothers from Kentucky. Everybody, the whole family, it might have been 200 of them all came to Jazz Fest. They was all from Kentucky and they had these corn cob things that they was pouring their little liquor in this plastic thing. Everybody drinking white lightning. Gladys Knight came on the stage, y'all. I'm smoking weed now. And these motherfuckers from Kentucky, the younger ones out the family smelling, and they want some weed. So they come over and off, man, give me a joint, man, go on, drink some of this white light that we got from Kentucky. You know, it's our homemade white light, come on. So I say, you know, I gave him a joint, and uh, I said, no, nah, I don't want none, but man went and made me a drink anyway. So said, man, you got to have one. I can't be like that, man. At least check it out. So now, Gladys Knight then hit the stage. Now, I'm high on mescaline now, too. I'm fucked up already on mescaline weed. I ain't had nothing to drink. Gladys Knight hit the stage. This motherfucker gave me that shot of white lightning, man. She went to singing Midnight Train to Georgia and bought the motherfucking house down. One more. Down with the white lightning and goddamn the party started. Boy, that motherfucking white lightning was some shit to behold. Got me another shot for the motherfuckers and smoking weed, man. I had so much fun at the Cincinnati Jazz Fest. Now, she bought the house down. With Midnight Train to Georgia. That's what all of them from Kentucky want to hear. This particular family that was their own family reunion. Man, these motherfuckers, she brought the house down. That motherfucker corn liquor was rolling, that white lightning. My song came next after she saw motherfucker. The song I want to hear saying came next after she saw Midnight Train to Georgia and bought the house down. She saw a motherfucking love on the board. God damn it, I hit the flow in. Yeah, now that white lightning talking, glad this love overboard. That was a hell of a night, boy. And that was the one night in my life I've ever drunk white lightning. Thanks to the family in Kentucky. Love, peace out. This is Real True Street Crime saying like, subscribe, share. The field marshal, you understand? And go over there and as I always tell you all. Jelani's Catering. Keep telling y'all, order 12 of them fish tacos to be delivered to you at home. I'm telling you now, there's other dishes you can order depending on what it is. He would deliver a steak and lobster to you and all that type of little thing. But it's got to be a certain, at this time, like I said, a 12 tacos, fish tacos. Be happy to deliver them to you. And check him out. Jelani's Table Table and see Jelani Tasting Table. Talk to him and see what he'll do for yourself. This is Eddie Jackson Jr. telling you about that J5. Telling you about that Chirac. And definitely about that Rosé. Buy black, spend black, and make us all stronger. You understand? Spend your money with black people. It put power in our community. That's what Malcolm X was about. Empowering us together as a nation of black people getting money, controlling our own community and our own destinies. This is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crime. Like, subscribe, share. I am Eddie Baby on Instagram. At Instagram, I am Eddie Baby, and I keep the pictures rolling. Like, subscribe, share, and we're going to be seeing a lot of each other. 